So on the next screen, uh, screen two, we will have our uh, next case. That will be a reimplantation of the left ureter in the bricker by Renaud Bolens. And our moderator is uh, Daniel Amporoy and Aldo Bocciardi. So the case is a 17-year-old male with a previous heart uh, fibrillation. He has anticoagulancia. In the background, he has done a radical cystectomy with Bricker in January 2021 due to a BCG refractory T1 G3 plus cis. He has ureters connected to the Bricker separately, and he had developed a stricture of the left side of the ureter close to the bladder. An intervention to dilate with both anterograde and retrograde approach has been has failed, and it was impossible to uh, uh, impossible Sorry. to the guide wire guide wire through the stricture. So he has a left side nephrostomy, Sorry and the planned surgery will be a robot assisted reimplantation of the left ureter in the breaker. And here we have the CT or the scan of the retrograde. Johan was saying that the right ureter is end to end, and yeah. the left ureter is side. Uh, okay. End. Hello. Uh, but Dr. Bolan. Yes. Can you hear us? Yeah, with a lot of noise behind, that is very difficult for me to hear you. Do you hear me better? Okay. Uh, noise better. Okay. Well. Is it good? Do you have the screen? Yes, we have. Okay, then I can show you what we did already. Then um, yeah, okay. the patient has a cystectomy breaker, and uh, mm -hmm. during the first uh, procedure, the patient has a very short uh, right ureter. And then they did a very long breaker, and uh, we have probably already found a part of the problem because uh, when you can see, this is the breaker, okay? Mm -hmm. But here we have a, a loop of bowel who is really adherent at this level. We have already started to, to release, but we, we have stopped just to show you the, the significance of the adherence because it's a really adherent section mm -hmm. here, camera. And in fact, it's uh, adherent um, uh, on the iliac vessels and it's a very bad place. And we have already started to free. But uh, show me lower, here. release the suction. You can see suction here to clean. And uh, we have a very strong adherence. And it was adherent from here to there. Then we have already released a part. And I have just want to, I want just to finish to release this one. Then I can, of course, enter inside the bowel or inside the iliac vessel. It mm -hmm. can be both. If I can choose, I prefer the bowel. But well, sometimes you cannot choose. And the idea is uh, just to release carefully this loop. Like that, we will have a better view on the on the distal part. But all the tissue here is really fibrotic. And I suspect that this is the reason why we have uh, the stenosis. Okay. Also, uh, strategically, my ports are placed uh, in another manner due to the, 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 the breaker, of course, and I put uh, more ports on the on one side, clean it, yeah? And it seems to come well. It's not too bad for the moment. I'm careful because the iliac is just there. Yes. Okay, this is better, then this one is free. What okay. we did also, um, we have look look here. This is the... The, the meso of the sigmoid colon. Uh, we can see here, inside here, this is uh, probably the uh, lower mesentic artery. Uh -huh. You can recognize here the left uh, iliac uh, artery. And the sigmoid colon is completely attached on the wall. But for me, uh, maybe it will make my life more easy. Then I decided just to make a window lateral from the uh, lower mesentic artery, because like that, we can find here something who looks like a ureter. Okay, then uh -huh. I think that it should be the left ureter. It is also really adherent. For the moment, uh, I was trying to dissect the distally to see if it's possible to mobilize. But probably in one moment here, I will arrive in the very ugly tissue and it will be impossible yes. to dissect more. Okay, the question of course here, we have to be careful uh, when you are so uh, under the, the meso to be sure that it's the left ureter. But in this case, due to the fact that the right one was very short, uh, I cannot believe that we have a so big loop of the right ureter, and this one should be the left one. Okay, then the idea is uh, to mobilize uh, the, the ureter, and then we will see, mm -hmm. just to give you an idea, the, the, the breaker is there. And you can see that the distance is not so far, and it will be maybe possible just to do a, a lateral, uh, 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 just a simple reanastomosis of both on the lateral side, I don't know yet. Uh, but this is uh, the idea. What we can do in uh, other strategical manner, if it's too short, 
is uh, to take uh, one rectangle here of mm -hmm. the breaker to make like a boari, not a boari, a monty flap, just to compensate the distance. We have uh, no tension in the anastomosis. Can be a second point, but here when I see how it works, show me on the right. I think that uh, it will be. It should be not so difficult, dependingly of the quality of the uter, and of course also dependingly if what I found here is really the uter. And for the moment, I just continue to dissect a little bit more um, to try to to free more the distal part of the uter. But uh, of course, it's a little bit difficult because it's uh, adherent due to the previous surgery. I don't want to dissect too much proximally because more I dissect proximally. Higher is the risk of devascularization, then yeah. the, the idea is just to descend the lower. And then uh, when I will cut, uh, lift up here, when I will cut um, the, the uter, I will see if I have the sensation to have a good vascularization or to have just fibrotic tissue. But for example here, you can see that the, 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 the tissue is uh, very strongly sticky. adherent. Sticky. And it's uh, sticky on the back, please, because it's... Uh, the iliac vessel here. Yeah. You can see the pulsation. And I try to release without a vascular injury. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, us something also about the trocar placement? Yes, you want to have an external view of the trocar placement? I can show you. Yes, if possible. Uh, is it possible to have the external view? Do you have the external view? Not yet. No, the external view with the camera outside. No? Okay, wait. We just pick up, we just move up the, out the, the camera. It's okay, okay it's fine. thank you. Okay, you see that? Yeah. Then the umbilicus is at the level of my right hand because like that we deplace all the ports on the left flank of the patient. Yes. On the, I put uh, my camera more or less on the mid distance between the umbilicus and the anterior iliac crest. Mm -hmm. uh, I was lucky because I didn't arrive inside the epigastric vessel, who can be, of course, the accident when you are at this level. And this one is close to my epigastric vessels. And in the other side of the breaker, I had a five millimeter stroker for my, for my assistant. But before that, I just uh, controlled under the view that I didn't have a lot of uh, adherence, that uh, I just released uh, some adherence there to create to her a window I can show you. Okay, you see the uh -huh. port is there, and uh, just at that level, you can see the adherence that I released just to create for her a good spot. And finally, uh, the adherence of the sigmoid colon make our life more easy, because uh, the colon is spent, and through this window, I think that is enough to dissect uh, the, the ureter. That's the, that was the strategy. Okay. okay. And now, uh, I just try to free more the ureter, but in one moment, I know that I will need to stop, because it will be impossible and probably also the quality of the distal part of the uter will be so bad that we will be it will be impossible to reuse uh, for the anastomosis and speaking about the anastomosis do you think uh, to perform again a, a breaker anastomosis or um, maybe a wall as on the at the end of the ileal conduit with the uh, ureter no, 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 I will do a lateral uh, implantation because okay. the wallace will be very difficult to reach the, really the end. Huh? We have, uh, it, it's always the same. When, when we do a uh, uh, redo surgery like that, it's important to avoid to remobilize everything yeah. because uh, you have a part of the tissue with a life and if you mobilize the tissue, you have a significant risk to devascularize yeah. some part and then finally you kill more tissue than you save. And for me, um, I think that it's not a good idea to to try to yeah you have to balance between balance tension free the, yeah. anastomosis and the vascularization yeah. of the tissues yeah. exactly mm -hmm. exactly but for me tension free is a, of course one very important point we have to we have to try to have a, a real tension free uh, anastomosis at the end is the reason why maybe i will do a monthly uh, mm -hmm. if i need uh, to 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 have a longer part but i don't believe that it will be necessary it's uh, very adherent. At this level, uh, we can be in trouble because uh, sometimes uh, the uter uh, looks, uh, it looks like the uter, but in fact is a lower mesenteric artery. Yeah? That's happened. Can you ask, can you clean? I remember that I did a very nice dissection of all the lower mesenteric artery, believing that it was uh, the uter. 
and finally uh, I ran a stomach the archery because I get between clips. But in this case, uh, I think that it's too big to be a, a, a lower mesenteric artery. Renault. It's Paolo Emiliozzi speaking. Aldo Bocciardi was not available as a moderator, so I'm one of your moderators. Uh, you told me you had some doubt about the ureter, if it's really the ureter, but you have a nephrostomy tube, so you could have yes, inflated exactly. the ureter just to be sure, just in case. Yes, exactly. It's uh, the plan C. If you have a doubt, uh, we can, of course, inject inside the, the nephrostomy tube to see if we have, uh, the, 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 the uterus is dilated or not. But honestly, uh, I don't have a lot of doubt. And do you think it's also useful to inject ICG to check the vascularization of the, of the ureter before the anastomosis? Uh, yeah, it can be ankyl. one uh, interesting point. The other point is uh, I just cut and I see if it bleeds. If mm -hmm. it bleeds, I know that it's vascularized. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Because the, the problem with the DCG is also you have uh, maybe in the urine a little bit at the end and then finally you have maybe false positive uh, uh -huh. reaction. Here it's hard to be really adherent. This part of the uterine normally was already dissected in the past and mm -hmm. I, I don't have a real risk to worsening the, the vascularization of this uh, part of the uter. Mm -hmm. Also, of course, it's important to know which kind of anastomosis uh, has been done. Yes. And they told me that uh, in this case they did a separate uh, anastomosis due to the difference of length of uh, uter. Inside a bit, yeah. And what do you think about the first uh, uh, surgical approach? I mean, uh, the choice of a minimally invasive uh, surgery can be useful for you to in performing a, a reintervention or not? In comparison yes, with an open more, approach. It's much better. It's much better because here, when we do a, a, a re-intervention, we, we descend the instrument inside. You imagine that if I have to put my hands, retractor, my head, and everything here, it's impossible to see what yeah. I see here. And for me, it's clearly a big advantage is when you do a redo of surgery, it's much better because we don't need to mobilize so much the, the tissue. And for me, it's clearly an advantage of uh, minimal invasive uh, approach like this one uh, because uh, we don't need to, to dissect so extensively to mm -hmm. have a vision and uh, an access on the structure. Mm -hmm. so I That's uh, my, my, uh, my opinion. No? Yeah, yeah. Okay, and the, the danger here is with the adherence. I yes. can enter in the wall of the uter and then finally I believe that I'm outside the uter but I can be also inside. That's the problem. But, well, the, long, the length is enough, I think. And uh, I can free a little bit more. Normally, the, when based on the image, uh, the stenosis is uh, probably lower. And I should be still in the healthy part. I will not try to free the, the distal part, really, mm -hmm. because uh, the distal part uh, will be really fibrotic tissue. I already checked it before. And I think that it doesn't make sense to go too low. Here, the tissue is uh, really white and fibrotic and then I think that the tissue is not a very good uh, uh, quality, it doesn't have a good quality. But the idea is um, to cut and to see how looks the uter and if I have a doubt I have to reduce the length of the uter mm -hmm. to be sure that it's still well vascularized. Okay, can you release? And you can see that this is one side. Yes. And you arrive on the other side but this part is very bad. It's only fibrosis. Is the reason why I didn't try to search my uterus at this level because, uh, of course, closer I am to the breaker, higher is uh, to catch the wrong uterus. It's also very important to remember that you have the right uterus somewhere, and the, of course, is uh, when I, I'm close to the breaker, I can see a tube, 
believing that is uh, the, the good one. And in fact, uh, I reimplant the, the wrong router. And uh, it's important to, to be careful. The question is also if we will need to pass behind uh, the, the, the vessel, like, uh, like the, behind the mesentric vessels, like it's, uh, it was in the past. Mm -hmm. Or if we can do anterior anastomosis, yeah. this is also a point of discussion. Um, and what do you think about which I which is the best choose, uh, uh, best choice in this choose, case? Uh, um, I will choose probably to go in front of the of the uh -huh. of the meso, because if not, I will need to do my anastomosis behind that one, and it will be really really yeah. difficult. Okay, I don't know if you agree with me. Probably rerouting would be the, the fastest way and the shortest way, probably. Uh, yeah, section here. And how do you manage the distal portion of the ureter, the, of the ureter once you, you cut it? Uh, well, what do you mean about uh, if the, I do a spatulation or, uh, or you speak yeah. about the, the distal part? The distal part. I leave it open. Uh, open. I think that it's uh, dangerous if you close it. Because uh, you have a stenosis uh, distally, then if you close completely, it's not drained. Then you increase the risk for me uh, of an abscess. And for me, it's uh, better to just leave it open. Okay. The question, of course, in this case is uh, the cathological risk. Huh? That's another issue. Mm -hmm. Because it's always the same. Yes, it's true that in this condition, he has a CIS, the CIS in the distal uterus. Maybe it's better to remove it. <laughs> you want to push uh, the, my limit, huh? <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's two different uh, points of view. Huh? One is the functional and the risk of infection, and the other one is the cardiological one. And you are right, Both. for the cardiological point of view, if I can rem remove the distal part, uh, it will be better. But well, you, you yeah, just but at the same time, you risk to surgery. you risk to uh, mobilize also the to have to to mobilize also the distal portion of the right ureter. Yeah, but they are implanted normally, they told me, in a separate manner. Yeah. And normally the risk is uh, very low. And uh, of course, uh, here normally I will not use this part of the uterus. And uh, if I continue to dissect, it's just to remove for carcinological reasons. Mm -hmm. But it's not to use uh, later. Then uh, I can stay really close to the uterus. You know? mm -hmm. But I, I don't know if it will be possible really to remove this fibrotic tissue. The good news is uh, I'm already lower than the. Uh, iliac vessels, that it means that normally I should not have a big ex vascular accident anymore because uh, I cross already the, the most dangerous uh, place. But well, just for you, I try to, <laughs> to dissect the distal leaf just to as, remove as uh, much as possible. the distal part of yeah, the okay. I don't know, are you planning to put a stand? And if it uh, through yes. the brick or percutaneously? No, no, uh, I will put a double G inside the breaker. Of course, when we put a double G, you have always the problem of the drainage of uh, the urine because the risk is at the level of the anastomosis. We can have a, 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 a leak. And if you put a double G, um, we have to consider to put uh, maybe uh, a catheter inside the breaker. If you see uh, at the beginning, after the surgery, in the first day, that you have a lot of uh, urine leak, and you have to put uh, uh, a bladder catheter at the end of the of the of the breaker. But in this case, the breaker is so long; it will be in no case a mess to pass something all along this breaker. We will need probably to do a, a cystosco flexible cystoscopy <laughs> to be sure to be. And, And here I can hold it with my grasp because it's not a part that I will preserve. Mm -hmm. And it's a really fibrotic and white tissue, then it's a very bad quality. Yeah. Okay, in one moment I will need to return from the other side to see if I can find uh, my ureter uh, on the other side from the, the meso colon. Hmm. And it's a very stiff tissue, mm -hmm. really fibrotic and very adherent. Okay. Once again, I just want to cut here. I have the, the impression that it turns more up on the right, that maybe I arrive near the, 
the breaker already, mm. it's possible. Yes, but once freed by the fibro Release. fibrotic tissue, the, the ureter wall seems, uh, seems quite soft, quite good, and also vascularized. Uh, I, I, sorry, I, I hear the other rooms, uh, and then it's uh, a little bit difficult to understand what you asked me. No, Can no, you repeat uh, your question? Was just just a comment. I said that uh, looking at the quality of the ureteric wall. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay. Looking at the quality of the ureteral wall, it seems quite soft. Quite uh, once you freed yeah. it from from the fibrotic tissue. Is not an intrinsic fibrotic uh, stenosis. Ah, that's always a question. Not ischemic, <laughs> not seems an ischemic. Uh, yeah, that's a question. Of course, uh, we, we can always have extrinsic compression, but mm. we, are, we will have always a doubt. That's a problem. That yeah, if, yeah, we, yeah. if we just release the uter, maybe it's right, maybe it's false. But if it's false, it will be a mess. <laughs> Once again, I want just to return. And I think that I'm arriving on the other side of the meso column. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm there. And why are you so concerned about suturing for calyx? Calyx, I can fully understand. Okay. When we suture calyx, are you doing? When or when we do it? That's the only reason to perform a minority. And the uter is there. I have just to reopen here a little bit to increase the size of my window. Okay, normally uh, I have a window open here, who goes uh, uh, behind uh, the meso mm -hmm. of the sigmoid column. Can you ask for it? Because I have a bleeder somewhere. Small bleeder, yeah. Normally the ureter should be lower somewhere. I don't see from the other side, wait. And here I'm on the uter, show me on the other side if I see my grasp. Yes, and the uter is uh, lower than what I believe first. Can you aspirate? Renault, if you pull the ureter, does the breaker, the ilia loop move or is everything is stuck? Uh, sorry, I, I don't hear you because it's... Uh, if you pull the ureter from the other side, from the left side, does anything yeah. move or everything is stuck no, there? No. Everything is stuck there. It's like a piece of wood. Huh? Okay. You don't look that, but uh, for me, from this point of view, it's like a piece of wood. This is the ureter here. Mm -hmm. But I think with you, it would be useful and potentially benefits having DFC for all cases. Maybe not clinical to but theoretical. Yeah, because it is interesting. We are sort of moving into an era where pressures are becoming. Can you yeah, spray it here down? Uh, Alex mm -hmm. Yeah, good. Using a pressure of five. So it is a bit contradictory in that sense that your only defense no. other than good technique is. I believe that it was far away from the vessel, but it's not true. Let me see where is the iliac vessel. Show me back a little bit. Show me here. Yeah, in fact, here I arrived close to the Iliac Vessel. No, just a doubt. No, it's not possible that I'm dissecting all the, long, all the length of the Iliac Vessel. I cannot believe that. Can you ask for it just in the, cor oh, the corner here? Yeah.
I don't know, do you have some advices to minimize the, the risk of a, of a stricter uh, after a radical cystectomy with breaker? Uh, no traction uh -huh. and good vascularization. Okay, so the, the stent, yeah. for, for how long you maintain the stent after the surgery? I don't, uh, I, this is another problem also, uh, is the, the water tightness. Mm -hmm. And uh, the water tightness is also a key to avoid the fibrosis. Then you have two kinds of stenosis. You have the ischemic uh, fibrosis mm -hmm. due to the lack of vascularization of the uterus, for example. is the, the reason probably why we have more left uh, stenosis than right. Yeah. For me, because uh, we have the dissection longer, the distal part uh, of the uterus, and also uh, the other problem is the urinoma. Then, when you have yeah. a non-drained uh, urinoma, you have a fibrosis who can appear, and I think that this is the other reason why we have stenosis uh, and fibrosis. Is the reason why I think that it's important to to be sure about the the quality of the anastomo of the suture, if possible. And also, uh, that's maybe a vessel, it's always the same than the other side. Okay. And uh, for me, it's the, the key. Traction, vascularization, and water tightness of the anastomosis. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you have the same sensation than me. Yeah. But you know, I say always, uh, in surgery, we believe a lot of things, but we are sure of nothing. Eh? Yeah. <laughs> I think that is the, the, the reason, but uh, I'm not sure about that. Yes, totally agree. Even if the anastomosis seems well vascularized and at the same time, uh, without tension, uh, you can risk to, to exitate in a to have a, a, a stricter uh, after. It depends also on, on time of the, uh, of the stricter uh, formation, because literature say that uh, from four to 12 months after surgery uh, is the, the period in which you can, you can find a, a new stricter at the level of the anastomosis. But you know, it depends probably also on the uh, on the pathogenesis of the stenosis, because if if it's due to uh, an urinoma, for example, and so uh, a fibrosis, it, um, the the manifestation comes uh, uh, quite earlier. Yeah, yeah, it's possible. Yes, section down here. Okay, I arrive close to the yeah. to the breaker. If I have to injure the, the other uterus, it's usually at this level. Huh? Yeah. Because you can have the two uterus who are really close one by side by side, and then you cut the tissue, and then you finish to, to cut the other uterus. But at least like that, uh, in terms of uh, carcinologic risk, uh, I will be able to remove all the distal uterus, and I think that is better. You are right, totally right. It was just uh, more surgery for me, but I think that for the patient it's better that I take a little bit of more time. Yeah. Because of course the, the question is, uh, in this kind of patient, we can have a very bad surprise and uh, to have a distal tumor in the uterus. Mm. It's a good candidate for that because it is a CIS uh, on the right uterus, that maybe you develop a tumor here that you cannot visualize due to the lack of uh, contrast, uh, and happen also. Yeah. This patient was treated also with uh, two endoscopic uh, uh, surgeries before to try to solve the uh, the problem of the stricture. Do you think that? Uh, this is reasonable to be the first approach, or we can uh, treat it in the patient directly with surgery, the redo surgery uh, in a laparoscopic approach, for example. For me, I prefer to redo directly because directly. Uh, the problem is uh, if it doesn't work, it's always the same. Huh? You have to think if it works and if it doesn't work, and what is the percentage of failure. But if it doesn't work, 
we will be like no, in a very hard scar tissue yeah. because when we when we do an endoscopic, we have to cut completely the wall, mm -hmm. and we create somewhere uh, iatrophic uh, uh, urinoma. Mm -hmm. And for me, I prefer to go one shot lap, well done. Mm -hmm. We have a higher chance to solve directly the problem and to minimize the recurrence. Because the problem is, when you have a recurrence, the problem that it's finished very badly is much higher. Yeah. In my life, I can't, re I can't remember any successful endourological procedure for stretches of the ureter. <laughs> However, <laughs> I, uh, I agree with you. Uh, it's also the sensation that I have, but fortunately, I don't have a, a big uh, experience of uh, strictures in the in the anastomosis, and because somewhere it's uh, always a failure of something. And I arrive really close to the to the the breaker now, and uh, it's a bit strange. Because I, I don't see the turn, it's maybe because it's so fibrotic here. Mm. Whoops, I'm on the other side. Yeah. Or I'm inside the iliac, no, I'm on the other side. And this is the stenosis, it's really the anastomosis. I will put a clip here, please. Do you have an emolog clip for me? Yeah, I think that emolog. I think... I can take the risk to just cut here, but if I have mm -hmm. a hole inside the breaker, I will be stupid. Huh? Yeah. Then I just put an emolog just here and I cut, and then uh, I have remove uh, all the, the, the uter uh, distally, then I can be sure that I will not have a very bad uh, surprise in the future mm. with the remnant uter. I think that you was uh, completely right when you, when you discussed that point of uh, this problem. Yes, it's okay, it's perfect. Mm. And after I will just decross the ureter uh, and look uh, what I can do. Um, and probably I will cut the ureter uh, piece by piece to see where I have the sensation to, the, to have a, a good vascularization. Okay. And if it's uh, long enough, I just do a, a reanastomosis in the breaker. If it's not long enough, I will do a Monty using the breaker. That's, uh, it can be very interesting. But you must mobilize but, a little bit uh, the breaker at the beginning of the surgery. Uh, I don't know because uh, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know because the breaker is very long. That's the advantage in this case. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the breaker is uh, very long. Then probably um, it will be already enough mobile to to reach the the other side. Come on back. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Someone has an access on the nephrostomy. It can be very interesting to inject because one of the questions, of course, is to be sure that we have removed uh, uh, all the stenosis. But uh, I think that the stenosis was really on the anastomosis. And maybe, uh, because of course, if I have a fibrosis, I have also to consider the place to cut. Because mm -hmm. if it's uh, blocked to here, I can start to, to consider to, to cut the uter only from here to somewhere there. I have to sacrifice the, the distal part. But I think that when I see that, probably I will cut at this level if it's like a, how I believe. And when you see this, The ball will come down. I don't know, I don't know. Mm. Or with, uh, saline, saline is okay. It's okay. What you have is just liquid, huh? It's just to see if it, it must be sterile because it will arrive inside the abdomen. But <laughs> no, no, no blue. After I have the impression to operate the smurf, everything will be blue. And just uh, water is just to see if uh, where is localized the. Uh, the proximal part of the dilatation, just to be sure that I will not leave a, a, a part a stenotic inside. Now. Well, if I have to do a Monty uh, using the, the breaker, I have to to sacrifice two centimeters mm. uh, of the of the breaker, 
but the breaker is so long that it will be not a big problem. And we can already check a little bit the breaker. Okay. Well, it seems to be uh, not occlusive that probably the stenosis was just, okay, it's fine, thanks. And the stenosis was probably just where I put the, uh, it's okay. Why I put the hemolog. Then the last question is the vascularization because I don't believe that it's well vascularized. Mm -hmm. When I see that, I think that I have at least to cut at this level the, the uter to see if it bleeds. Okay, do you agree with me? Yeah. And then let, let me see if I can mobilize the, the breaker more to have a more mobility to descend the breaker closer yeah, where probably. I should be. You have some omentum attachment here. The, the, the breaker itself seems also a little bit dilated, but, uh, okay. <laughs> I told you I don't want to have um, tension. Tensions. And would, you, would you consider to fix with a few stitches the, the breaker to the anterior part of the mesom there, covering the artery? Yeah, yeah here, yeah. It can be... It can be... A mesentery stitch. Yeah, yeah, just here. Mm -hmm. We can fix. Well, I can do, but it will be maybe a, a little bit under tension. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking if I do a tubulated uh, part of the breaker, just to do the anastomosis without tension. Uh, it can be very elegant. I think that I do that just mm -hmm. for the fun. How many times I have for the surgery? Yeah. <laughs> okay. I do that. The meter is there. Okay. Mm -hmm. and the, it really anastomosis at this level, more or less. Huh? And I just need to do, to do a rectangle two centimeters wide okay. uh, to be able to put this one uh, at this level. And then I can do my anastomosis tension free there. And after I have just to close the breaker. Okay. Can you push the section here? Camera inside. Move your section. Yeah. So you, so you didn't cut the right the right ureter, as you can see. Sorry. You didn't cut the right ureter. Not you, had yet. The pr you had the proof uh, now. Not yet. You had the proof. Not yet. Not yet. Okay. Uh, just to coagulate a little bit. I have to be careful when I manipulate my flap. Okay, place inside the ball, the ball like that, yes. Wait, once again, camera more on the right, on the, on the, the right side, yes. Yeah, place on the inside the, inside here, yeah. yeah. Not too much, huh, because I don't want to have a stenosis of the, the breaker itself. Okay. You see that I save a significant length. Yes. Oh, no, release, release. Uh, and now when I have my uter, yes, it's nice. Well, um, I cut here. Mm -hmm. Camera inside. 
Yeah. Yeah, I have blood, huh? you see that? Yeah. It bleeds, and I'm sure that this side is well vascularized. That's a very good point. I have just to think about uh, the spatulization direction. Yes, the uter is alive. Huh? And this is for the pathologist, please. You will spatulate on the top. And yes. And yeah. Yeah, we have urine and blood, and it's alive. And I have to do a spatulization. <laughs> Uh, I should have a, a vacuole 4 o Yeah, 4 o no, 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 CT is too big. Let's show me. Yeah, a small, a small one. Okay, this is the spatula. Remember that it's always the same. Huh? We will need to to fix it, uh, mm -hmm. uh, but we lose the length of the spatula also. Then what I will do, uh, I will use the corner of my rectangle. You see that I, I dissect a, a, a rectangle of tissue inside the breaker. And um, I just uh, forgot one small detail is uh, to check if uh, the length of the breaker was long enough to support the resection of two centimeters. <laughs> I hope, because now it's too late. Yeah, we can cut uh, at this level. Thanks, the second needle driver. It's okay. Okay, I must be out in. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe you can take the flap here with the grasp. Show me more on the right for the moment. I take the corner of my rectangle. Mm -hmm. you see that? Because it's this one who will go inside the spatula. Is it the 4 O suture? It's a very big one. No, no, I say 4 O. 4 O. Or 3O, I don't know, but uh, do you have 3O? Vacuum 3O you have here? 3O, suture. Three O. okay, we'll do with the 3O because the tissues are thick on both sides. You need a, a plug, you need a plug here? Yes. Not too much traction is just to, to to avoid that it moves in all direction. Uh, I'm out. I must be outside inside. Huh? Okay. No, move inside. I don't want to see the tube. Oops. Come on here. Okay, then now I am outside. I can cut this one. If not, it I will drive crazy. No, it will be clever to to maintain because it marks the position of my uh, the beginning of my suture. 
On the right. Yeah. Then here I'm outside. Not in the meso is better. Reno? Yes. Sir. Yeah. You don't use cutting needles. No, no. It's a. I, I hope that it's not a cutting needle. It should no, be doesn't a, doesn't look like. No, no. It's a round needle, huh? the round tip needle. It's very important. If you use a triangle needle, you will have a lot of holes. Uh, but it's not the, the suture that I use uh, normally. Uh, I prefer a four hole. But in this case, the both uh, sides are already fibrotic. Then it's a really thick tissue. I think that the trio will work also. What about the strategy for the anastomosis? I mean, you will perform a running suture, a continuous suture, or yes, both yes, sides, yes, yes. or maybe interrupted? I ones. do. No, no, I do always running suture. It's uh, one thing coming from the past that we have to do uh, separate stitches for to avoid the stenosis, and uh, because it's ischemic, but I think that it was just uh, the rain dance. Well, we have the rain dance because we believe we do the rain dance, and when you have the rain, we believe that it's because of the rain dance. But I think yeah. that actually with laparoscopy and robotic, uh, we know that uh, it's completely false because many sutures that were performed in the past with the separate stitches are now down uh, with the running suture and nothing happened. No? Yes. And I take my time to be precise uh, for this part because it's the quality of the suture will give the uh, water tightness. Yes. Uh, I will use a stand um, seven or six uh, double J because it will be impossible to go through the, the and also the patient has a nephrostomy to protect them. And you will leave it for three months. Uh, so double G, no, no. The most important will be the water tightness of the of the closure of the breaker, and it will be important to do a a, a loop uh, graphy. Mm -hmm. Just to be sure that it's uh, watertight before to remove it. Yeah. The, the model that you use, uh, that one is okay, it's fine. For me, uh, I see nothing without my glasses and you show me, but 26, uh, 26 is enough, a yeah, short one, because uh, we're already in the middle of the uterus. Yeah. Okay, give me another, the suture, the same suture. Yes. And I have to do the second spatula. The question is if I push the double G now or if I push later. Okay. Maybe it's more clever to do no, because at least I can see, well, the entrance, but you can see that the quality of the anastomosis is, uh, seems very good. Yes. We have a little, little bit of blood that uh, I'm sure that is well vascularized. I think that I will do the second uh, uh, part of the anastomosis no, because if not, I will fight with the double gene, please. 
Okay, and I prefer to, to do no because I see well. But if it's a really thin uh, suture, it's better to put the double G in no and then you do the second running suture. If not, you have a significant risk uh, to take with you both sides of the uter and then you close the, the lumen of the uter. Mm -hmm. But in this case, it's a very large one then. I don't believe that you have this kind of risk, I hope. If I catch the other side, uh, I have to do an alco test. But um, I just uh, prepared this uh, surgery uh, a little bit uh, yesterday and I didn't find any case published about a Monty down uh, from, a, from a breaker like we do today. Mm. And this may be our first case in the world. I don't know. If someone wants to publish, he's welcome. Yeah. Mm. I also double check the literature before this moderation and I saw that uh, the anastomosis are performed directly on the breaker or uh, if you have to remove a lot of tissue of the ureter because of the stenosis length is uh, uh, significant. Um, some, some authors try to do uh, a ureter or ureterostomy uh, connecting the two ureter together. Yeah, I don't like that at all. Yeah. Because, because the, the other the side it works ureter, very, the very right well. The right is uh, on, on the retroperitoneum, still on the retroperitoneum, also uh, mobilized and so uh, with a, a lot of fibrotic tissue around. Yeah, and also the, the right side, the, the, the right side uh, works perfectly well. And it's, uh, we put uh, in danger the other side if you have a complication later. Yeah. And for me, it's the major issue when we do a ureter or ureterostomy. Yeah. Is the why I think that finally, if it works, huh, I hope that it will work. But if it works, I think that it's a good compromise. The question is just to know if I calculate well the length of the, the breaker, because it's one thing that I forgot mm -hmm. to check if the, the breaker is long enough. But I suppose yes, yeah. because it's just two centimeters, it's an elastic tissue. And also remember that for the moment, the patient is uh, with a big volume inside the abdomen then probably we can accept to be a little bit under tension at the beginning because uh, at the end, finally, uh, when we remove the gas, the mm -hmm. pressure will disappear uh, and the tension disappear. So yeah. I think. But you will fix the, this, this anastomosis anyway to the, to the mesenteric peritoneum or, or not? I don't need them. No, uh, okay. no, because I, I, the, the only question is, of course, when we don't pass under the meso, is uh, what about the risk of um, of uh, um, bowel uh, occlusion under mm -hmm. the, the the bridge? That's the only concern. Yeah, it is a good good concern. <laughs> but I don't believe that it's because I put one stitch that I will avoid that. Mm -hmm. I should incise completely the peritoneum to extra peritonealize completely the the uter. But uh, it will be very difficult to do. Mm -hmm. Okay, now I finished my anastomosis. And normally it should start to be like a tube if I calculate well. Yeah, more or less. Yeah, and I have to go a little bit more with the other one. Where I am, I'm inside. Oh, yes, I'm inside. That's strange. Can you clean here a bit? Okay. 
Yes. Okay. Good. Good. And uh, this one is on that side. This one is this here. We have put to place the double J before to do the tube. Okay. The guide wire. Yes, I need the guide wire. This one. Yeah, you can cut the suture. I don't need. We have a hydraulic guide wire. Yeah. Mm, give me the. We have a grasp to grasp. I can use this. So. I have to enter on that side with the guide wire. Yes, I give you this. Give me the guide wire. Another grasp, please. Now we have to place. Uh, you can already put the double G on the guide wire on your side. And the trick here is to place the guide wire in parallel to the U2. You see that like that is more or less parallel and then with one hand, I can enter uh, uh, the guide wire inside. Okay, give me the bag. You can give me the double G. Okay. I will place the guide wire inside, and I have just to make the tube with the. Okay, push, yeah, push in, push in. Yes, more, more, yeah, it's arriving, yeah. Well, it will be too long, yeah, huh? oops, sorry, show me back. So, Three. Okay, look at me. The bladder should be there normally then. Okay, you can remove the guide wire. Yeah. Yes, it should be long enough. I should be in the kidney. Good, you move it completely. Yeah. I should be in the kidney huh? because it's, uh, the, the bladder is normally at that level. And uh, I will be annoyed with the, 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 the loop for sure. It will come down. Uh -huh. Okay, Vicryl 3O. So, yes, no, uh, aren't you concerned that uh, some loop can slide underneath your Monty? Uh, uh, yeah, that's uh, the, the question that we discussed about uh, yeah. the, <laughs> the extra penalization or not. That's right. That's, uh, it can be a problem. It's a point of discussion that uh, exists also when we do uh, some uh, some people does the uh, pass the, in the breaker in the same manner like that, but it's true that we increase the risk. I, I will see after what I can do, if I can f uh, fix or not uh, to try to minimize this risk. I don't know yet. Honestly, I invent the technique step by step today just for you. Maybe if it's feasible, just a, a flap or peritoneum cover in the. Yeah, it can be a possibility. If but, feasible, uh, I, I know I will it. not need uh, to mobilize completely the column for that. Yeah. But uh, maybe I can use a part of the epiplume because I saw part of the epiplume and maybe it will be possible to put the epiplume somewhere. Like a plug. Yeah. Like. Uh, okay. But we can see that we have no tension now. Mm -hmm. It's tension free. That's uh, for this reason, I already are uh, very happy. Um, the question is if I use this one 
to come here or if I use the other one. Maybe I will use the other one because they're already there. Mm -hmm. And I will use this one to close the breaker. Wait, wait. I want to take a little bit more. No, would you consider to decrease the abdominal pressure just to have less less tension of the abdominal wall on the breaker or not? Yeah, yes, of course we can do that. But here, honestly, I, I don't believe that it's necessary. Okay. Because the distal part of the uter is moving up very nicely. Then, but of course, it's a, a very good remark. Uh, if you have the sensation that it's too much under tension uh, for that step, we can uh, of course uh, reduce the pressure inside the, the abdominal cavity just to minimize the tension on the breaker, but I don't feel that it's, uh, no, it's really smooth. Huh? It's, uh, it goes straight to the, the, the ostium, but it's not really under tension for me. You are the boss. But well, it's, uh, I think uh, elegant technique and can help uh, maybe in some difficult case as it's not well tied because I forgot that it's not a V-lock. I hope that you have a recording of this case because it's uh, really original, I think. It should be one case for my YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> you are modulating your surgical strategy during the surgery. Yes, exactly. Then it's always the same. The surgery is... Uh, 80% with the brain and only 20% with the media. Yeah. And it's a question of uh, establishing a, a strategy before. You have to have, we must have a plan A, plan B, and sometimes plan C. Mm -hmm. And then develop plan four during the surgery. <laughs> well, yeah, after it's just a dissection and a little bit of suture. Oh, come on here. I have to be careful because I remark that the patient has a, a dilated a loop. Then it means that maybe the stoma is a little bit uh, small mm -hmm. in the passage of the wall, and then it's a good candidate to have a urinary leak. Huh? Then uh, if you have a leak, we have to put a, a bladder catheter inside the loop just to, uh, to be sure that it's uh, drained well. Yeah. That's the last and time. You put, you put a sure. drainage also. 
yeah, yeah. I always put a drain inside the abdomen cavity, mm. not really for the the the, the urine leak. It's, it's uh, mainly mm -hmm. for the bleeder, because yeah. uh, for me the morbidity of a drain is uh, close to zero, but the safety is one hundred percent. And if I have to operate my father, I put a drain and uh, operate my patients like if it's if they are my father <laughs> or my mother, not my wife, but like my father and my mother. <laughs> And then I put a drain. I think that is safer. No, I'm joking. Yeah. <laughs> I hope that she never hears <laughs> that video. Okay. Sorry for you, we recorded you. <laughs> or no. Okay, we can cut this already. And after I have just to make the tube, uh, longitudinal tube, I need to be down. And we have to think about uh, what we can do to try to extra the 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 Monty. Do you think it's did? possible also to, just to do an incision of the peritoneum and fix the ureter to the to the two margins? Yes. Yeah, it can be a possibility. We have to study after how what what will be the best option. Hmm? And here I have to uh, not inside the tube. Mm -hmm. How did you choose the length of the flap to 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 be developed from the from the breaker uh, to connect uh, it with the with the ureter? I mean, ah. it, if if the ah. length is not enough, uh, you you okay. don't perform an attention free anastomosis. But on the other side, you risk to reduce a lot the caliber of the breaker itself. Yes, exactly. And uh, in fact, the length is not given by the, 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 the wideness of the resection that we do, because the wideness of the resection mm -hmm. uh, is uh, two centimeters to turn around and to create a pseudo ureter when we do the, 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 the tube. And you always resect uh, two, two centimeters of wideness of the, of the breaker. The, the most important is, uh, in fact, the length of the, of the circumference that you cut. Mm -hmm. And the limit, of course, is the meso. Yeah. And based on that, uh, probably the, the maximum length that you can take is uh, five centimeters, no more. Because after five centimeters, you will be, uh, by definition, inside the meso of the, of the, of the breaker itself. And that is, will be very bad. That's one is, uh, I want to see behind. No, it's okay. It's a good caliber because we have a difference of, of uh, diameters between the uter and, um, and the Monty can camera in because I have to take really the edge. If not, I will uh, do like a sausage. We have a pseudo difference of uh, diameters, but it's due to the quality of the tissue. Huh? Mm -hmm. The bowel is uh, smooth and the uterus is rigid. Yeah. And uh, for me, it's not a big problem. I should take a little bit more wide uh, rectangle inside the breaker because now I'm obliged to use really the edge of the, the tissue to secure the, the mm. diameters of my tube. Huh? You see, if I took a little bit more wide, uh, I have less, I have more uh, length just to create my tube and it's more comfortable for me mm -hmm. because now I need to do a really precise suture with uh, just a minimum of tissue that I can take. The good news is uh, 
you can see that we have still a small bleeders from the flap and it means that it's still well vascularized that's also very important when you operate and you see that you have no bleeder at all uh, it's maybe because of a problem Okay, that's the reason why you choose this direction to develop the flap because of the vascular, yes. vascular yes, yes. direction of the, the, the direction of the vessels. Yes, yes, we cannot take longitudinally, and yeah, because okay. of course, if you take sure. longitudinally, you can say yes, it's longer, and I think I can take all the length that I want, but you will have no no vessel inside, huh? yeah. because the vessels are transversally uh, localized. Yeah. Huh? Is the reason why the li the limit is the five centimeters, probably max huh, when you when you want to correct in this manner, more than five centimeters you cannot take, or you have to invent. A, I don't have think about, but maybe it's possible with a, I don't know a double monty or something like that. But you can also do a, a disconnected monty, but you have to to reuse a part of the bowl. Uh, it's not the same procedure, of course. Uh, here it's just just a monty made from the from the uh, starting from the breaker is uh, the part the reason why this uh, is uh, for me really elegant is just because we have used uh, I bet I'm on the other side already we have used uh, the breaker wall for the for mm. this uh, reconstruction yes Renault since this is a pedicle flap uh, do you respect the, the rule of plastic surgery of the ratio three to one from the base of the length or not? You don't care? No, no, not for this. Uh, in the Monty, you don't need uh, to respect that rule. Uh, the Monty, the principle is you take all the, the circumference of the of the of the the bowl because it's uh, uh, an organ with very well vascularized, and you can cut really on the near the near the meso and all the flap that you develop from the other side uh, will stay vascularized and it's the advantage huh? and it's not uh, the rule uh, uh, one two uh, you can be you, you are at two centimeters wide uh, and six centimeters that is uh, more one three the proportion that you can take huh? okay okay that's it i cannot forget one detail is to close my proximal one <laughs> because uh I have still this one that I've used and it's not tight, huh? And I have to pass one more time somewhere and just to tight to secure it. Because I, I, I left it suspend, suspended after to have done the, the one side of the, the anastomosis of the spatula. Well, probably with the time nothing happened, but uh, well, I don't like to leave something for the other. Do you use extra stitches for to fix the to fix the sutures or not? Not just closing. No, I just close here with uh, okay. the end, like a running suture. It's enough. It's just to stabilize. I don't need to, mm -hmm. to do something special. It was the end of my running suture, and that's it. After I have to remove uh, the needles, I have two needles inside, and we have to think about the extra patinization. Just to avoid to have Ernia under, who, who will be maybe uh, the next uh, challenge, huh? because I didn't think yet about what we can do for that. The principle is to avoid to have a small bowl who goes down. Maybe um, I will use the momentum to try to to create like a sliding okay. area. Yeah, be careful, you have the two needles there. Okay, scissors and monopolar. Then, okay, now the repair is done. That's a good point. We have resect uh, all the distal part of the uter. It was a good point too. And now the question is uh, how I can avoid to have a, a problem there. That's a question. Show me uh, a little bit the meso because the epiplume. Renaud, excuse me. Epiplume is there. Will yes. you, will you, would you consider to check the water type of your procedure, sending saline, uh, <laughs> washing? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm not a good friend, but you know. <laughs> I hate you. Uh, do you have a bladder catheter? I want to put a bladder catheter inside the stomach to put water, please, to see if it's watertight or not. Yeah, you can send from the nephrostomy tube. Ah, oh, yeah, but, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, it's true. We can inject in the nephrostomy tube. Okay, but in the nephrostomy tube, you cannot put the, all the breaker under pressure. That's the problem. Do you understand? Yes. Yeah. 
I don't know. Okay, we do. We try with the with the nephrostomy. Yeah, can you close that? If we, if it doesn't work, if it's not uh, very good, uh, we will uh, inject inside the breaker itself. Then I have just to check now if uh, okay, what I can do to minimize the risk of uh, of that. Show me here the patronym. Renault. Yes. Yes. Best compliments as usual. Very very nice. Do you want to cover the the, the the new anastomosis or uh, it's okay? Oh, for me, it's good. We we just I want to fill uh, with water. Do you fill with water? Yeah. I have a small leak here. I think yes. Yeah. Just between the suture. Yeah. Okay. The question is if I put one more stitch or if I just leave it like that and I leave the drain. No, it's okay. Give me a suture of the same. I will just put a stitch here, but just one because uh, better is the NMI of good enough. And the best option is probably just to wait. Uh, the, you don't uh, want to, the, the to have any ischemia. Yes. Okay. So I have the risk to do uh, like a like a, a big piece of okay. tissue will finish to be obstructive. But I, I want yeah. just to put one stitch there. Okay. Just one. Okay. Just. Uh, for self-satisfaction. You see, Reno, I'm a good friend. So you, now you can sleep well after yeah, this yeah, stitch. Yeah. I don't know. But you are right, I was jumping too fast between the two stitches here. I see that. But I have to be careful in one moment. We have to stop and just drain through the natural urinary tract. And then after it's the, the tissue will meet the water tightness, the complete water tightness. Huh? Is the reason why we leave the, the catheter and the everything are so long. Okay, I think we have to close. Thank you very, very much once again for your beautiful for procedure in laparoscopy. <laughs> Thank you, very much. Thank you very much, Renaud. Okay, bye-bye. Bye-bye, bye-bye. Congratulations, Renaud.